Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to parallel two power units together that are made by two completely different manufacturers. I know what you're thinking, how in the world is that possible? But today I'm going to show you a way to make it happen. I've been using the power generators to power a critical load panel that's in my house. And I use this adapter right here. It is a uh, RV plug that adapts it to a generator plug. And what this plug does is it'll take the hot wire from the generator and it'll bring it to the hot wire on the plug, but then it also jumps it over to the other hot wire. So it doesn't give me full, the 240 volts, but it does power both of the hot lines on this plug, which powers both sides then of my critical load panel. Without this adapter jumping the wires between the two here, I would only have one side of my critical load panel working. So we use that concept to make the adapter that I'm about to show you. So every night I would have to come out here and switch it. I'd have to unplug this plug from this generator and plug it into this one or vice versa based on the battery life left of the unit that I was currently using. I wanted to simplify things and make it so I didn't have to come out and switch it over every night. So this is the contraption that I made. It is a female generator port rather than the male one. So I can plug my cord right into this box here. And then this box, I have two different RV plugs on it. One goes to this unit and one goes to that unit. So this gives me the ability to run a hot wire, like I was telling you here, from one generator to this port and then one hot wire from the other generator to this port. And then they share the ground and they share the neutral. So I'll take a minute here and show you how I did the wiring on the inside of this plug. So here's what it looks like on the inside. You'll see that I have a black wire going to the X and a black wire going to the Y. This is my green wire here going to the G and then my white wire here going to the W on this outlet. And then we had to do a wire knot to connect the two green wires together and the two white wires together. It, they will share the ground and they will share the neutral. They need to be on their own separate black wire. You cannot combine the two black wires together or you will cause some big issues. All right, so now you know how I got it all wired up. Another thing that I had done is I put a little piece of green tape on this cord and a piece of blue tape on this cord. And now I'm gonna take you in the house to my critical load panel and show you why the blue tape and the green tape is important. So here is my critical load panel. And you'll see I got a piece of blue tape here and a piece of green tape here. So now I know that when I have the cord with the green tape plugged into it, it's gonna power this whole side of my critical load panel. And the cord with the blue tape is gonna power this whole side of my critical load panel. And that's important for in my application because one of my systems is slightly larger than the other and has more battery capacity. This side here tends to draw a little more power than this side. So I have this side hooked up with a bigger battery capacity. This setup is fairly simple to do. Anybody could do it. It's pretty straightforward. All the plugs have um, marking on them tells you which wire goes to where. So this plug here, same thing. It tells you green wire goes here, white wire goes there, and it tells you where the black wire goes as well. So if you're looking to simplify your life a little bit and, and you have a couple of different power units, you want to hook them together and extend your runtime on both units and not have to come out and switch them out all the time, this is a super easy build. One thing you could do differently than me, I had this cord laying around. You could just buy an RV cord that already has one end on it. So you just need to buy an RV plug and then you just cut the wire in two different spots to give you the cord lengths that you need. And I'll put a link in the description for a cord that I've used in the past for our camper, as well as a link for all the other components that I use for this build. I hope this video is helpful for you guys. If you found it helpful, please hit that subscribe button and follow along with the channel. I like to post different tips and tricks I do around my homestead to make my life easier, as well as doing some product reviews on some amazing products that I've used and found to help save me money and make me money on my homestead. Thanks again for watching guys. And I hope you have a blessed day.